Sindile, for an update for those of you who are very familiar with the leopards of this area and for those of you who are not, the male leopard that we had yesterday on our live safari was seen about 500 yards away, first thing this morning, drinking from one of the water holes. Now that could be a very interesting encounter because this is a path that Mvula, the, the ex-dominant male leopard of this area, regularly walks through and across when he moves to the southwest. Now we've already seen the situation play out with Sindila and his mother and their very fraught reunion. It'd be another interesting thing to see how his reunion with a potential father, certainly a male that he could well be familiar with, would play out. My suggestion would be that he would send Sindile sprinting off. Because although Bula is relatively old, in leopard terms, and he has lost his control of this area, he is still much bigger than Sindile is. And while we wait for Sindile to make up his mind as to what he's going to do, and try and avoid poking his head with the thorns, back across to James in the tent. Hello everybody, our loyal, wondrous followers. I'm just getting focus here on the, some gecko eggs inside Bilibab, the buffalo's head. Can I say Bilibab? Can I do that live to an American audience, do you think? I'm going to try. Okay, we've got one minute to TV. Let me remove this from the buffalo's cranium so that we might reveal him in all his glory. Now, the beefies seem to have absconded largely from the uh, water hole. I'm just going to drive off the rover there, see if we can see another one. Oh dear, oh dear. Ha! Ah. I think, I think the rover's going to turn over. No, it's righted itself. Oh goodness. I've got Connor standing outside here, absolutely panicked that I'm going to drive his rover into the water. This is an entirely valid panic. It could happen at any stage. Right, 20 seconds, 20. Here we go. Hello everybody, back again we are. You're here live in the middle of the Kruger National Park, eight and a half million acres of untrammeled, wonderful wildlife wilderness, and it's wonderful to have you with us. Please stay with us for the next little while. It is Father's Day, send us your shout outs and I have two now. One to Hayden Turner, all the way in Australia. It's great to have him with us, one of our old time presenters and one of the greatest and most faithful safari livers in the world. Then to Bob, I think it is indeed. Tim, you want to send a message to Bob, your father, who is 85 years old and about to go on his first African safari. Bob, good on you. Can't wait to have you out here. South Africa will welcome you with open, open arms. Now, this buffalo is uh, probably unrelated to the ones that I was uh, sort of talking with, with Ronald in the pan, uh, this long dead, probably a few years now, and you can see the front of his face eaten off by lions and hyenas. Now that's of course rather grim, in fact it's possibly disgusting, David, that's quite enough of that, thank you very much. Now, as with uh, George the giraffe, his cranium is not empty, indeed inside it is dwelling, well hopefully soon will be dwelling, the eggs of a rather remarkable creature. Now we saw the gecko, have a look at this everyone, there we go. You saw that gecko earlier, the Bibron's thick-toed gecko, say that three times, it'll make you feel good. Bibron's thick-toed gecko, and there are the two eggs of a Bibron's thick-toed gecko, living inside the cranium of this old buffalo bull, and I think that's just unbelievable. They, we've been watching them now for about... I think we've been watching them for about a week and they haven't hatched. I think maybe they've been laid rather too early simply because uh, it's winter now and reptiles, cold-blooded, like to be born in the summer. Now, our feral giraffe has got a primate to show you.
Of course, just as James was linking, he just, the primate decided to move. And we are on a live safari. But there he is now. He's popped there. It's called a vervet monkey. Uh, also sometimes referred to as a green monkey. And that's a big male. Now what he was doing, he was sitting up high in that marula tree. And he was keeping watch. You can see he doesn't like being on the ground. And he sprinted off. Now, he was keeping watch for leopards, lions, and other predators. They have incredible eyesight, and they are able to spot. I'm trying to see if there's a few more. I know there's a big troop around here, and it seems like he was the last of them, and he was keeping watch to make sure all of them could move through safely while he checked the potential danger area of the thickets behind us. There he is. He's made it all the way to the next tree, and he's a bit far off now. Oh, let's go forward a bit. And he's off again. Oh, sorry about that. Well, we, this is live and we can't control the movement of the animals. And remember, shout outs for your dad on this wonderfully beautiful Father's Day safari. You can use the hashtag safari live. There's literally not a cloud in the sky. The light is gorgeous. And we're in search of any creature. You never know what's going to be around the next corner. And I'm hoping there's going to be something fantastic. Now, while we check through around the western edges of the quarantine clearings, let's go see what Steph's up to on foot. Welcome back to the bushwalk out here in the African wilds deep in the Kruger National Park here at Juma Private Game Reserve. And although we're deep here in the bush and we are on foot and we are in the sand and I've just drunk a whole cup full of elephant juice freshly squeezed out of an elephant dropping, it doesn't mean we have to be uncivilized. And right here, we have a soap bush. Have a look at this. Now, I'm going to show you how to make some soap quickly. Strip off some of the leaves. Just like that. You accelerate the process with a little bit of water. And then you start to make your soap. And very quickly, soap starts to come out of the leaves. It's full of what they call saponins. Just have a look at that. Gets nice and soapy in there. You wash your hands, in my case, washing off all that elephant juice. And you can see that sheen. Hypoallergenic, of course. You can use it on babies, you can use it wherever you feel like, to be quite honest. Me, I quite enjoy that. I probably need a little bit for around my mouth after what I attempted to do a little bit earlier. <laughs> All right. All right. And from us, you're going through to Jamie. He's got some delay. Oh, and some delay just gave us the most movement he's given us all afternoon. And he moved about a meter away from the spot where he was lying. But welcome back onto the back of the vehicle known as Rusty. My name is Jamie and we have this extraordinary young male leopard. One of the most famous leopard characters in the world. Well, since he has decided to plop himself down right there, let's reposition ourselves ever so slightly. Maybe not, we've actually got a view. Now this is a good sign. The fact that he's yawning, the fact that he's restless, that he's got up and moved. He moved first of all because it's kind of like turning over your pillow and resting your head on the cool side of the pillow. That's what he's just done. The earth beneath him got a bit warm and so he shifted and moved away. But the fact that he's yawning and the fact that the temperature has dropped bodes exceptionally well for the potential that he might start moving at any moment. Oh, yesterday afternoon, there you go, see he's thinking about getting up. Here's another big yawn for us. Oh, when big cats do that, if he starts to lick his paws, he's giving us all the indications that he might be getting ready to get up and start moving. Isn't he just such a handsome fellow? Oh, we have absolutely no idea who his father was is on this special Father's Day safari, but if I had to guess, and James and I had this conversation earlier, we think there's something 
a little bit almost Anderson about his eyes. There he goes. Hello, boy. What's there? I'm going to keep nice and quiet because he is going to... I think he's thinking about walking right past the vehicle. He's just stopped for a quick break. And there you have it. Look at those piercing blue-green eyes. This is just phenomenal. Hello, boy. It is so good to see you again. And Jordan, welcome on our live safari. If you are joining us for the very first time, you wanted to know how many animals have these GPS collars, like the Jaguar in front of you. Well, first of all, Johnson, it's just Sindile, and I'll give you a very brief history. Essentially, Sindile, although he is a totally wild leopard, had a very unfortunate encounter with a domestic dog that had rabies. So he's been vaccinated and he's now being monitored now that he's back into the wild. But Johnson, he's not a jaguar. He is in fact a leopard because this is where we are coming to from is alive in the middle of the African bush. Uh, we don't have jaguars here, although it is a dream of mine to see jaguars in the wild one day. But our leopards are equally extraordinary. But Sindile, which means the survivor, as far as I know, Sindile is the only leopard that has a collar and only because he has one of the most extraordinary stories that I have ever heard in the wild in my entire life. The only time that I have ever seen human intervention to this extent and it has just played such an incredible role in this young male leopard's life. It's because of that collar that he was able to be released back into the wild once again. And while he decides what to do, it's time for us to send you back across to the tent. And for those of you who are watching on television, you can always keep track of these stories. You can follow us each and every day on the internet, every day, twice a day, on wildsafarilive.com. So if we don't have an ending for Sindile's story, we will do in the future. Back across to James now as Sindile sharpens his claws. I'm so glad that Mighty Prince has stood up. This was not a Mighty Prince, but it may have been a Mighty Princess in its time. It's a female verdant hawk moth. How beautiful is that? Now, while you have a look at that, and while I put it under the microscope, Phil Schultz, you're sitting with your father, Phil Schultz Sr. That's easy to remember. And you're watching and reminiscing about your time in Southern Africa. I think that's wonderful. You know, my earliest wilderness memory is of a time climbing a mighty baobab tree with my father. I think I was just 11 years old, and I get a little tearful every time I think about it. It's one, it's a great memory I've got. And let's have a look now at this verdant moth under the microscope. Look at that. Isn't that incredible? Now, I think you'll find, I don't know much about the verdant moth, the verdant hawk moth, other than it, that it eats uh, nectar. And you can just see that little bit of coppery stuff sticking out from the bottom of its jaw. That is the proboscis. And the proboscis is a fancy word of, for saying sort of a long sticky bit out the front of the nose. And that will be put into flowers to suck the nectar. And the reason I know that this is not a mighty prince is because of the antenna. Can you see the antenna there? Those and whoops, hang on a second, I've lost control. There we are. The antenna, which are losing control again. I'm sorry, those are my fingers, everybody. They're not part of the moth. There are the antenna. Ooh, one of them's come off. That makes it very easy. Right. Now, <laughs> we just get, oh, it's getting blown around. Anyway, it does not have what we call a combed antenna. And if we look at it like this, I think it's probably a bit easier if I hold it. There's a howling gale blowing in from the northwest. Well, it's not really, it's a gentle zephyr, but it's enough to blow this lady out. Now, if you look close in at the antenna there, you can see that they do not have combs on them. Now, the combs of a moth are what picks up the pheromones that a verdant moth like this would have let off when she was ready to mate. Sorry, she's very slippery, slippery customer. And that, of course, 
all of you will know that when you catch a moth, it leaves a sort of dust mark on whatever it touches. And those are the scales. They don't actually have hairs, although this moth looked like it had hairs there. They weren't hairs, and they're very slippery. Isn't that just wonderful? I think that's beautiful. Now, we're going to look at one or two other things under this microscope. Ronald has been retrieved because he's about to make a, an appearance at the fireside chat, if you can believe it. Uh, let's just have a look here at the top of this baboon spider. Now, we looked at the baboon spider yesterday, and this baboon spider would have been stung round about there by a spider hunting wasp. And the spider hunting wasp lays an egg inside the abdomen. There's the abdomen there. Look at those beautiful copper colors. I think that's just too stunning for words. And look at those hairs. And the spider hunting wasp would have stung it on the back of the abdomen, laid an egg inside. And while immobile, completely immobile, I'll just take him out again and show you on my hand. You can see, I mean, for most people, this would be an utterly terrifying activity. There you can see the spider. Now, for most, like I say, he's been stung there and probably not dead, interestingly, quite possibly still alive, but totally paralyzed. And the wasp's poison would have paralyzed him. The egg will hatch in the abdomen there and it will then eat the innards out of the spider. So, I mean, it's quite a clever strategy if you're a wasp. It's a really awful time if you happen to be a spider. But what happens is that the spider stays alive, which means that when the wasp eggs hatch, they have fresh food to eat. Now, what we're looking at there is the, are the pedipalps and the eyes. Now, the pedipalps are those sort of, um, looks almost like a camel's toe at the front of the spider. So we'll put him under the microscope again. And there you can see the pedipalps, which are topped with those rather terrifying looking sharp, shiny black fangs. He had excellent dental hygiene, this, did this fellow. Now, that's enough of the spider. In about half a minute, we're going to go to a small break and then we're going to set up next to the fireside. Now it is Father's Day, which is an ostensibly male day, inescapably, and uh, many males around the world are fascinated by the world of technology. Now we're going to look at a lot of the technology that is involved with bringing you a high definition signal out of the iconic Kruger National Park. We'll be looking at the final control, the rovers, the drones, the walking, and the most romantic job in the world, that of wildlife cameramen. We'll see you then.